afternoon or good day or wherever you are. I am your instructor for 610. Um, one of the things I like to do is I like to kind of do a little um, lectures so that everybody kind of knows what's going on and and what I'm thinking is important and all the other things that kind of go along with it and things I'd like to kind of cover as we go through the week. So you should have lectures for this class. Um, they'll all be um, up on YouTube so you can watch them or um, I'm really debating whether we just want to go ahead and make a bunch of mp3s and, and dump those in so that you can just download those and put them on your mobile device and, and listen to them that way in case you've got a super long commute if you're um, working anywhere from home or if you just want to listen to the course lecture while you're, while you're mowing the lawn or doing chores around the house or any of those other things. So I'm sure that we'll figure out some happy medium there. But again, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dan and I'll be your instructor for this class. So you should have all completed 600, got some really good concepts about cloud computing, cloud services, and applications, right? And in this course, we're gonna build on, on this course as a project. There's actually three projects in this course and you kind of build upon each one of them to solve a problem. And we'll go into that problem here in a little bit when we cover a little bit more week one. So definitely, you definitely do wanna go into the syllabus that we've got here. Um, Project-based learning is actually really kind of fun because it keeps you engaged and actually gives you a goal that you're working for instead of, oh, I have to write a paper. Um, no, you're actually working on a project and you're actually working on something that's really kind of interesting here for that first project um, as we get into it. And again, in your syllabus, you've got all the things you'd ever want to have, uh, all your course materials. You can just go ahead and access those here if you want. And those are going to be pretty much so straightforward. Uh, there's no, no textbooks or anything else in here. And that's because it's all just going to be straightforward um, doing the thing. So we're in pretty good shape there. And then as we kind of go through all this, I'm going to slide you back this way just because I probably got this window. Um, grading, I'm actually pretty easy um, on this one. Just turn in everything on time and we'll be good to go. Um, if you need an incomplete, do let me know. Our big three projects are Cloud Service Technology 3 project where you're going to prepare a presentation on the value of migrating an organization's existing IT infrastructure. Um, project, oh boy, you guys are probably going to ask me, oh, is this going to be live or am I going to have to do a video recording? Um, we'll, we'll get there in a minute on how you're going to deliver your narrated presentation of the value of migrating an organization's IT um, infrastructure to the cloud. Project two, cloud risk and compliance. This is the best part of anything that has to do with the cloud. Um, risk analysis, um, I'm a big fan of that because we should be tying risk analysis and do everything we do. Especially if we're gonna move someone's company into the cloud, we definitely wanna have some risk analysis around that, some compliance issues, and then comp cloud provider evaluation. Which one is the best? And not all cloud providers are going to have all the things that you need for whatever project you're working on. And it really all depends on where you can get the best cloud service for the best price. And you basically, you have got your four major players and it depends on where you want to be in the world, right? So like, believe it or not, Alibaba Cloud, which is the fourth in the United States, um, in the United States is actually really prevalent throughout Southeast Asia and Middle East. Um, I'm working in Saudi Arabia right now. I'm working primarily with Alibaba Cloud, but it's super, super similar to AWS. So we're doing an AWS Alibaba Cloud installation where we're sharing um, systems between the rest of it. And we're prepping ourselves to be working and going into, um, into mainland China. So we're doing all that paperwork. So building our infrastructure in the cloud, we've got our risk and compliance issues because mainland China's got some really interesting things that, that we're still trying to work our way around on how we want to do that. Or do we just want to stay in Hong Kong, right? Do we want to do these things? These are all valid questions when we're moving our, our systems into this environment, uh, cloud provider evaluation. You know, it ended up being AWS and Alibaba. We actually are using both um, that provided us the biggest bang for the buck. Um, for what we wanted to do and provided the best services for what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. Um, again, no cheating, um, be, in, be, be nice to each other and all the rest of it. So just some really standard policies and everything else. Um, again, grades, grades, grades are good. Um, I think you need to, to be getting a, a 3.0 or better here on this one. So because of master's level, um, I do round up. I will absolutely uh, round up, even though they say don't do it. Um, don't round up to the next whole point. Uh, I probably will. Hmm. Good library support and all the rest of it. Here's our class schedule, all right? So make sure you got this, right? So our milestone due date. I'm really fussy about milestones. I'm fussy about due dates. Um, and it's just the nature of where I work and how I work and what I do. 
So um, milestone dates are really, to me, these are kind of fixed in stone. These are the places we want to be. So we want to go ahead and get you to doing uh, and used to working on that deadline. So as much as you can, um, I understand life happens, so I'm pretty comfortable there. But you know, definitely do go through and make sure that you've got all of the, the due dates here written down, um, especially these big ones, and kind of go from there and um, march, march on from there. Again, 11 weeks, we'll be in here for 10 weeks, 11 weeks, and we'll be doing our thing. And that's kind of the overview of the class. It's all gonna be good. So for our projects, right, we have specific projects and overview. Um, on this so you're going to be able to go into this click on the projects tab at the top of the screen and you should be in pretty good shape um, on that one so you can get there so um, it's really kind of interesting what they're looking for right so you're going to be an online um, ballot company for this one so this is what's interesting right because this is really a big deal right now in terms of how do we make sure that we um, retain the integrity of an election um, and still use cloud services and all the rest of it. And we've had some really bumpy elections and not just not just last year or the year before, not just the presidential elections, but we've had some really interesting things come out of elections, um, some of it true, some of it not, um, some of it provable, some of it not provable. But if we're gonna do this and we're gonna be ballot online company, one of the biggest things we need to do too is take a look at how we're going to um, make sure that someone can't get into us right because again all we need to do is make one mistake and the hacker only has to get lucky once so that's where we're going so we do need to start working with with the cloud and do other things because their um, companies growing um, internal data centers maxed out um, that means they probably virtualize their internal data centers so that they're using more and more and more of their systems until there's just nowhere to go and you know the project will be completed in steps six steps to the project Final narrated PowerPoint presentation, you will be assessed on your ability to convey your understanding of cloud computing and how it can be used to benefit your analysis. So your paper, when you write it, there's your entire um, your entire paper right there. Description of cloud computing, basic capabilities, advantages and disadvantages, analysis of economic implications, right? IT business needs and SWOT analysis. So when you're writing your paper, this is heading one, <laughs> heading two, heading three. All right, and it's pretty straightforward on that one. Um, definitely do check out the FAQ. Um, do mark all this stuff done and do get help if you need it, right? And you can always give me a shout too. Um, but these are the things I'm gonna be grading you on to kind of go through and take a look at this in terms of your competencies, how we want this to work, what we want this to look like. So for week one, we're actually gonna be working through the first three um, steps on this one, describe cloud computing. So cloud computing, again, pretty straightforward. We've got some pretty good um, um, key points here. We're gonna be focusing on the three majors, right? Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Um, all three of these each bring different things to the table and how they work, right? Amazon Web Services is pretty much so like you can build your own data center, you're good to go. Microsoft Azure is a little bit different. You can still build your own data center, but there's some caveats in how they do things in terms of their design for fabrics rather than just be able to pick up a piece of raw iron and go. So there's different things in Azure than you have with Amazon. And in Google Cloud, if you go into it and really take a look at it, it's really more API driven. It's really more data driven. Um, you're, you can buy services, but it's really interesting when you go in and you actually try to buy a, co a, a computer, right? It's a little bit more difficult. So Google Cloud is great for data processing. Absolutely 100% great for data processing. So if we're doing um, online balloting, then maybe Google Cloud might be our best solution and given what we've got to be the front end, right, in terms of how we're gonna collect data and all the rest of it. So again, it all depends on what you wanna do and how you want to solve this problem. So remember your cloud service models, cloud deployment models, and then your cloud compute and cloud storage, right? So all those good things and then go through and, and type up all this. So you've got um, 800-145 cloud computing. Um, also look up 800-53, um, 800-TECH-53. That's also a really interesting good one for cloud computing along the way if you wanna just go ahead and get a little bit of extra, extra stuff on that one. Then we want to go over advantages and disadvantages. You know, there's just some really interesting things that, again, and this is where this kind of goes. Cloud computing is good for some things, but it's not good for everything. 
And this is a big one. Uh, and this is one of those things that you kind of do want to take with a grain of salt. It is really good at some things, but not really good at other things. So when you start getting into this and you start taking a look at how you want to do your cloud computing model, you're trying to solve a problem for elections, election security, making sure that that one person vote um, counts all the way through at the end. So if one person votes, do you want to do this via blockchain? Will blockchain work here? Well, cloud computing has got some really good blockchain, but it's still pretty immature. Your best blockchain is actually coming from, from Amazon, but all four of your services, um, all, all three of them, all four of them, depending on which ones you want to use, all really do good blockchain, right? You're not going to get blockchain with VMware, but you'll get it really, really. You'll get good blockchain with Azure, Google, AWS, Alibaba, just about everybody does this now. A lot of people also do crypto, crypto signing, crypto hashing. So you've got all those things you can do and go along the way. So you have an interesting problem to solve here, right? Because balloting and elections is all about that integrity of I vote, it counts at the end. But how do you prove that I voted? And that was just my vote and I only get one vote, not a couple billion votes because we don't want me to have a couple billion votes. So always good to know. And we already know that they're running full capacity. And, you know, just go ahead and start pulling things together for how they want to do this, right? You suggested the cloud's going to be more efficient, more cost, cost effective. And again, make sure it is. But make sure you're taking a look at the whole thing in terms of how an election works, right? And that whole process, because you don't want to just gloss over the top of this one. You really want to dive deep and you want to make sure of what you've got, because when you get to step three, your economic implications are what's going to matter here, right? Because remember, you're paying as you go. You're paying for your services. Um, you can pretty much so predict that your regular services, your off election year cycles are going to be pretty, pretty boring, right? You're not going to be spending a whole lot of money on the cloud and, and it's going to be pretty quiet, but you can guarantee that the year that there's an election, the whole year is going to be a pretty big spend. It's going to be a pretty big burn of money. So, what do you need to do to make sure that you've got that burn and that spend under control and and you've got some economic implications right in terms of you can taper down on off election years so you can save money there and just work maybe your data center will actually work for off election but when you go into the election service time that's when you ramp up your cloud documentation and your cloud systems to kind of take care of that overload um, but then how do you do that functionally? What's the economics of it all? What's the risk and the, and the policy and the procedure and the regulation around all that stuff when you kind of get into it? And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to submit it. You just drop your file here um, and we'll kind of work through. You want to write your summary, the economic implications, showing the savings and how you arrived at them. Uh, I'm pretty much so a big stickler for that one. So we want to check and see what their budget looks like. Right, so they have um, IT budget, they, they keep on going, okay, so they're trying to save money. So they're 10% um, of revenue, they keep on trying to save revenue, right? And that's a big one, right? Because this is generally what you want to see. And then revenue, so 5% of 225 million is roughly 11 million, million, 11, no, yeah. Yeah, roughly 11. Um, so, you know, you've got to work out how you're going to do that and where you're going to spend, you know, capital expenses. The cool part about that, is that when you're doing the cloud, all your CapEx goes away and becomes OpEx. So you're going to take that and burn it into operational expenses. But what your manager is going to see is, oh, I don't have to spend capital expenses anymore. Boom. And they'll kill it, but they won't increase your OpEx, right? So you're going to want to make sure when you do this, that you raise this OpEx a lot, right? Because you don't have capital anymore because you're going to be burning that on OpEx in the cloud. So make sure Make sure, make sure, make sure when you do this, because this is a big one. This is one of my first boobers when I did the cloud and I was trying to estimate a company. I was really um, a, a burn in here. I, I'm never going to forget this one, right? Make sure that when you draw down your capital expenses, that you bring your OPEX up, right? Because you're not going to be able to run the cloud on operating expense of 800 and keep your original data center and do all the other things that go along with it. And then what's inside these... Um, these operating expenses, co-location fees, and everything else. So if you're keeping this and you're keeping your original data center, you're keeping this number intact, right? But if you've got X amount of dollars, um, you could probably do it. But your big handoff is going to be between capital and OPEX, right? Current and proposed IT uh, infrastructure, how many data centers, how many servers? Um, you know, is this something maybe you can do on demand? 
or maybe schedule, what's your predictability cycle for this? Is the usage going to be pretty predictable based on um, election year services and, and off election year services, right? Um, this is a really cheap computer to get, right? That's a really cheap. And why do 400 database servers maybe something like one of the inbuilt managed um, databases is actually going to be a better service, whether that's Cosmos DB or Redshift or any of the other data warehousing applications or data warehousing databases, maybe that's going to be better. Man, why why burn the, the OpEx? Why burn the money on 400 database servers if I can just go ahead and provision out a really nice Cosmos or Redshift and, and have that replicated across um, using, using the CDN um, on that one, right? So this is something I can take a look at. There's some cost savings here. Um, proposed storage, um, data transfer, um, storage inline, storage itself, right? So if you think you're going to be doing this, well, what's going to be your most effective score storage? And what is the data um, aging policy? How long do you need to keep these records for? Um, you, know, you would assume that these records are only really, really, really super important for a limited period of time, um, probably for election night and probably for the week afterwards. So you can use some some data aging policies here so you can move everything into different tiers of storage that will save you money on storage and then go ahead and put everything into Glacier or Deep Archive you know, at the end of the, the time and then pay for deletion after however many times or however many years you can get away with keeping it, right? But data transfer in, um, are there better ways of doing this, right? Can you do this and cycle through the CDN so you save money there? Um, again, lots of ways of, of solving this problem. This is actually a pretty good infrastructure cost. This is actually not a bad, a bad amount of money. So that's essentially it in terms of um, project one. So this will get you through the first couple of weeks. And um, definitely do reach out to me and give me a shout when we kind of go through this. Um, I will be here for you um, all the way through this class. And I'm looking forward to working with you. Again, my name is Dan. And again, just looking forward to working with you on this. And let's go have a great, great term. Thank you. Wait for the next one.